Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. We're going back to 1994 and we're checking out the Creative Labs Sound Blaster AWE32. I only got this sound card recently. It was donated by Daniel. Thank you very much. And complete in box with all the accessories. Now, this is a really feature packed card, so we're gonna unpack it slowly in this video. Here we have a bit of a size comparison. The AW32 is a very long card. Just look at the size of it. This is the Sound Blaster 16, and the digital portion of the Sound Blaster 16 is basically also in the AW32. So in terms of digital speech and quality, it is just like the Sound Blaster 16, but it adds all the MIDI stuff to it. And then here we've got the AW64 Gold. So if you follow Creative Labs sound cards, over the years they try to integrate and combine as many chips as possible and basically drive the cost down so we can nicely see an evolution uh, of these sound cards. Because the sound card is so long, it will actually sag a little bit and there are some uh, mounting holes here and you can just get a plastic standoff and use that to lift up the sound card. I'm doing the same thing with an AW64 in one of my machines. There are two aspects to the sound card. Firstly, we've got the digital portion and then all the MIDI stuff. Let's start with the digital stuff first. So we're getting 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz in stereo. And this sound card is definitely a really good hybrid sound card for running Windows 98 as well as MS-DOS. If you're worried that an ISA sound card is slower or performs slower compared to a PCI sound card, don't be alarmed. I've done tests in that aspect and actually the ISA sound cards performed really well, even slightly faster. That might have to do with the uh, lower latency of the ISA bus or something like that. So in terms of speed for early Windows games, it's not a difference, but you will be missing out on uh, EAX or A3D acceleration, for example, in more of the modern games. Under DOS, we also get 16-bit support and 44.1 kilohertz. However, most games do not uh, support such high sample rates. But let's listen to a game and just to get an idea of the differences that the sample rate can make. With DOS, it is true that most games have very low quality samples to begin with, maybe 11 kilohertz or something like that. However, many games, when you select the Sound Blaster 16, there are benefits because of mixing with a higher precision, basically. Regarding DOS compatibility, the Sound Blaster 16 and therefore the AW32 and 64, they are fully compatible with the old original Sound Blaster. With the Sound Blaster Pro, they're only compatible in mono, so they won't play back in stereo. However, this, it is often brought up in forums and discussions, but it is really not uh, an issue because uh, pretty much every single game that does support stereo samples on a Sound Blaster Pro is modern enough to also support the Sound Blaster 16 natively. Like with most of Creative Sound Cards, there are lots of revisions. So most of what we're going to see in this video does apply to all the AW32s. But this is uh, one of the final revisions. It's the CT3990. And there are some differences between the revisions. I will briefly touch upon those, but that's really a topic for an entirely different video. Before we dive into the MIDI stuff, which is really the highlight of the sound card, this revision is plug and play. So there are no jumpers to configure the resources. It is all done by software. I sometimes hear that people don't like that. Um, I personally never had issues configuring a plug and play card. Even on an old computer like a 486, the creative software is pretty good. Um, at this point, I also want to quickly talk about drivers. Um, there are lots of different drivers available. Let's start with a plain DOS installation. So let's say you've got a machine with MS-DOS 6.22. There are two drivers you need. There's the CTCM BBS driver. That's the plug and play manager. 
and then you need the Sound Blaster Basic Driver Pack. You can uh, download them from the Creative website, but I have put a AW32 page together on my website with all the drivers as well under uh, on one page, which is a little bit faster to navigate. So the CTCM BBS and the SB Basic drivers, they unpack in DOS, and then you can either copy them onto two floppy disks or just run them from a folder and follow the installation prompts. Personally, I see this card much more useful in a Windows 98 SE environment and Windows will automatically detect the sound card and install the drivers. However, there is a driver update available and I will put the driver versions on the screen, so I definitely recommend doing that. Also, there's another tool we need, the AWE control panel. This one allows you to load sound fonts into the uh, either onboard RAM or into the RAM expansion, and we will cover that in more detail very shortly. In Windows 98, you can also run games directly from within Windows. I refer that to as running from the MS-DOS prompt. That also works uh, straight out of the box. But the most difficult aspect that I always get questions about is when you shut down the machine into MS-DOS mode. Unfortunately, Creative doesn't have a installer for that scenario, but they have put together a driver package. Unfortunately, there is just a readme file and you need to copy a few files around. So to make life easier, I created a little batch file sbawe.bat you just put that into the root directory and there's also a subdirectory that goes with it and all the files are ready to go so just copy that onto your retro pc shut down the machine into ms-dos mode and i've done a ms-dos mode easy uh, tutorial if you're interested in how to set that up i will put a link down below in the description so basically um, yep you just have to copy that onto your machine run sb uh, AWE and your sound card should initialize just fine in MS-DOS mode. The important thing to understand is that the resources are configured in Windows 98 in Device Manager and not in DOS. So you change the resources in Windows and they will then apply to MS-DOS. The AW32 comes with onboard memory. There is a one megabyte ROM or read-only memory which contains the uh, samples and most games access those samples, for example, Doom or Descent and other games. Um, the card also has 512 kilobyte of RAM which can be used to load sound fonts. Now there are a lot of games that support the AW32 directly, so you run the sound setup and you just uh, configure the AW32, but like I said, most games only use the integrated samples from the ROM chip. The real highlight of the sound card is that you can load sound fonts onto the memory of the sound card and then use that through general MIDI emulation. Now this works better under Windows. It has to do with the card using non-masked interrupts and having issues with protected mode games under DOS. But let's start with Windows first. So you launch the AWE control panel and here you can upload uh, sound fonts into the RAM of the sound card. So out of the box, the card only has 512 kilobytes of RAM. However, we have two memory slots here and that can be in, uh, upgraded to uh, a maximum of using two 16 megabyte modules for a total of 32 megabytes, but because of memory addressing, only 28 megabytes will be available. And then you can upload standard sound fonts in the SF2 format. And let's listen to a game with a few sound fonts and that just gives you an idea that uh, sound fonts can totally change how a game sounds. Creative also supplies a sound font for MT32. However, this only works with games that do not change the default instruments. A good example is the secret of Monkey Island, so let's check it out.
So using the card in Windows 98 and the MS-DOS prompt, loading different sound fonts, switching it between general MIDI and MT32 is really the highlight of this sound card. Now we can shut it down into MS-DOS mode and here things are a little bit different because the sound card uses non-master interrupts and it's not compatible with protected mode games. The general MIDI emulation doesn't work in nearly as many games. Now MIDI support with DOS games is definitely dominated by the MT32 and general MIDI standard. The AW32 is not supported by many games. Um, some of the big titles do support it, but the list is not that extensive. Now, there are some patches to add support for games. Sierra is a highlight. Um, they put together a patch to add AW32 support to some of their games. So let's check out Space Quest 5. Most of the AW32 revisions do have an authentic Yamaha OPL3FM chip. This revision, the CT3990, does not. So no authentic Yamaha here. We've got the Creative uh, CQM chip. Basically, Creative didn't want to pay license fees to Yamaha, so they created their own clone chip. Um, it doesn't necessarily sound bad. It definitely sounds different so if you're used to the opl3 then that might be an aspect that you don't like so much something you can do on the aw64 is apply effects such as reverb and chorus to fm that's because the fm chip is routed through to the emu 8000 processor on this revision on the ct3990 this is not the case so the fm chip is not routed through to the emu 8000 so unfortunately on this revision you also cannot apply a reverb and chorus to the fm now we're going to have a look at the connectors on the sound card this one is a real highlight this is a digital output and it is compatible with those optical output brackets. So this is what that looks like. Here we've got one of these uh, SPDIF breakouts. There are three wires. We've got uh, the signal and ground going onto the header on the sound card. And then we need another one, the red one. We need plus five volts. And I basically just use a multimedia and measured the headers and I found a five volt pin here. And that's all you need. Now, Unfortunately, it seems only the AW uh, synth uh, is outputting through the optical, so no digital speech and also no FM. However, I still think this is really cool. Uh, if you're into audio recording or archiving or you want to document how games sound with the AW32 and with the MIDI emulation, then this is a really cool way of getting crystal clear uh, audio recordings without any background noise. In fact, all the recordings in this video, apart from that digital sample in the beginning, all the recordings in the video have been done with optical out. And there's another input that could be of interest. This is for the PC speaker. So we have two pins and then you just connect the cable to the motherboard speaker header. So this lets you route the PC speaker through to your sound card. Um, be aware, however, that like with all other inputs on a sound card, the more inputs you use, the more noise you're gonna pick up. If you're curious, this is what I used for testing the sound card. It's a slot one motherboard from AOpen with the Intel 440BX chipset. We've got a Celeron 300 and 256 megabytes of RAM. So this is a system that works really well with this sound card. In terms of other connectors, we've got an ID connector here to connect a optical drive. We also have a wave blaster or wave table header here. However, on many revisions of the AW32 and definitely on this one, you will get some hanging notes in certain games. So this is unfortunately um, another creative card that suffers from the hanging note bug. Um, here we have inputs for our optical drive and let's also have a look at some ports in the front. Here we have the 15 pin port for either connecting joystick or gamepad but also an external MIDI device. We've got a speaker out here. You want to avoid that. You want to use the line out. This one is not amplified and 
uh, gives you less noise and we also have a microphone and a line input. If you install memory modules you have to move that jumper to the left to deactivate the onboard memory and switch over to the memory modules. Although this is a plug and play card there are a few jumpers here especially the MFBEN jumper is important. Um, if that's not set you won't have MP41 MIDI emulation in DOS games. Under DOS we get a nice graphical mixer and here it pays to mute all the inputs, PC speaker, line in, optical, uh, unless you need them. But basically uh, muting all the inputs will give you the lowest noise output. So the AW32, a real powerhouse of a sound card with a ton of features. And um, I see this mostly uh, useful in a hybrid machine that runs Windows 98 as well as the MS-DOS mode, um, especially early Windows games that don't use EAX or A3D will sound just as good on the sound card compared to a PCI sound card. And then you can shut the machine down into MS-DOS mode or run games from within Windows uh, through the MS-DOS prompt. And here is where this card really shines, the ability to load different general MIDI sound fonts, enable MT32 emulation and Everything is really convenient. If you stay in Windows, you can do everything through a graphical user interface. The card also has decent sound quality. Uh, once you tweak the mixer, you're getting a very low noise output. And the optical, well, uh, the digital output uh, and the ability to connect a optical output module. For me personally, as a content creator and uh, letting you capture crystal clear audio recordings, that is really a highlight. It's a real shame that uh, you can only capture uh, the MIDI stuff coming out of the EMU 8000 chip and not the FM and not the digital speech. That's a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Also, the wavetable header is plagued by hanging notes, but many of the other Creative Labs sound cards have that same issue. And you don't get the Yamaha OPL3 uh, FM chip as well. But still, I think this is a really cool sound card, very flexible, and if you're using a hybrid machine running Windows and DOS, I think you will have a lot of fun. And what I also like about this sound card is it is a Creative Lab sound card, so you're getting 100% compatibility with pretty much any DOS game, from really old games like Prince of Persia to the uh, more modern uh, MS-DOS games with high resolution graphics and MIDI support and all of that. But what do you think about the AW32? I would love to hear your stories. Uh, have you owned one? Did you buy one? Uh, how was it? Uh, did you switch to other sound cards? All that interesting stuff. Please share your thoughts down below. And that's it for this one. I will see you next week with our Friday video. But keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes there will be a bonus video. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like and click on that notification bell. And I shall see you soon with another one.